Morning or evening, grace, brethren, and sisters. Let's have Oliver back along with us here uh, with uh, Word Awakening and our uh, Sunday sermon. And I look forward to uh, to uh, getting into the 33rd Psalm uh, here this morning. We'll be looking at the first four verses, so certainly am uh, very happy and uh, pleased uh, that uh, God has allowed us to meet again over the cyber waves. <clears throat> and got... Uh, of course, much to pray about should always be in prayer. Uh, do remember my wife as well. She has a, a special request. Also, uh, my mother-in-law, as we said, who's really over like the COVID and the same stomach bug that me and my wife had some weeks ago. But she's had a uh, difficulty getting her strength back up. And also, like her her uh, her brother Tim Jackson, actually a couple of those first Tim Jackson, her brother uh, who passed out had emergency surgery. Uh, going to be having emergency surgery Monday morning. And then also I found out just a few moments ago that uh, her sister, Deb Lamantia, was, uh, taken to the, uh, was taken to the emergency room as well. She was dehydrated, and I uh, think they're talking about removing her kidneys. Uh, so remember uh, all, of, uh, all of those people, as well as uh, Brother, uh, I'm sorry, I can't even think of his last name, but I know his first name is Larry. Brother Larry, he actually goes to a church that supports us. Lawler Baptist Church, and he has like some bleeding and things coming from uh, his legs, has difficulty with his legs, so we'll certainly take and pray for him as well. As uh, And also all of the other needs out there, all those that are sick in body, all those that stand in need financially, spiritually, and emotionally, and uh, those uh, people that you have, as we always mention, uh, those people that are uh, going to be having surgeries, just had surgeries, and those people who uh, um, um, who have diseases, who have cancer, and uh, so forth, as well as, of course, all the lost, they'd be convicted and saved, and all the people discouraged, that they'd be encouraged, and all those backslid, that they'd be reclaimed. Amen. And so, with uh, with all of things said, we'll go ahead and have a word of prayer here. Our Father, we sure do love you. We thank you for the innocence of sin. Thank you for all that you've done, all the many blessings, Lord God, that you've bestowed upon my, our hearts and upon our lives. And I thank you so much, Lord God, that we have a God that uh, hears and answers prayer, and a God that takes an interest in us, that loves us so much. You know, even whenever all the world has forsaken us, it's so wonderful to know, Lord, that you never have. You know, we have a God, uh, both, you know, that helps saved people, people that want to live for him, but also a God that loves sinners and a God that wants to save sinners. Of course, all of us now, were at one time a sinner that uh, uh, that was on our way to hell, but you changed our life and saved us, and we thank you so much for that, Lord. And we do pray, Lord God, Lord, for all the needs among us, for my wife's uh, special need, and for uh, Deb Lamantia and Tim Jackson with uh, the procedures they're going to be having and their health needs, Lord, and my uh, mother-in-law, Jenny Tyler, that you would just strengthen her, and also Brother Larry and his health needs. And thank you so much, Lord, that we've got a God that we can call on, that uh, hears and answers prayer, and uh, we certainly do uh, uh, certainly do hope, Lord God, that you would just uh, provide for these needs, Lord God, Lord, as the, uh, uh, the personal need, Lord God, that me and my family have as well, uh, that you would honor and uh, bless that request. And I just pray that all of us would be the prayer warriors that we ought to be in, the Bible that we ought to be in, that we'd all be revived, that you would just revive our hearts, that we would get excited, Lord, about your work and about your will and what you have for us, and that uh, we would just uh, follow after you, Lord God, all the days of our life, not just having a good beginning, but a good endurance, and just enduring until the end. And, you know, whenever our time has come, may we be like the Apostle Paul and say, you know, we've ran, you know, we've ran our course, you know, we've done the best that we, that we could do. And uh, may we just continue on, Lord, it certainly is our prayer. And uh, we pray, Lord God, for revival, that you would uh, just send us another one, that you'd raise up more revivalists, you'd call more men to preach, and uh, more men with a hunger and a thirst for righteousness, for prayer, for the Word of God. And may you raise up ladies, Lord God, who will marry these men, and ladies who will also just have the spirit of prayer who will uh, want to do your work and what you have for them. And may Christ be honored and glorified throughout everything that we do. Lord, for it's in that precious name of Jesus we do pray. I ask you to help us this morning. Uh, help us as we preach, Lord, move every hindrance, every stumbling block of demon of hell. And may the Holy Spirit have liberty to move this morning, Lord, for it's uh, in Christ's name we pray. Amen. And amen. And of course, so by way of announcements, revival is almost uh, is almost uh, upon us. Uh, we will be uh, beginning revival next week, next Monday on the 25th, and uh, we'll be going to the 29th. We'll be preaching in voice and in sign language, and so we certainly do uh, look forward uh, to uh, to revival. And uh, so come on and be with us there. And uh, uh, we're going to be looking at why revival tarries. Be praying for the meeting, and uh, so we uh, do look forward. 
uh, to the meeting coming up. Of course, this week, everything here will still... Uh, uh, will still uh, be the same. Actually, right after we get through preaching here now, we're actually going to do a special video about rising early in the morning, about rising early and seeking the Lord. And as we said, we'll be doing those, you know, from time to time. These videos, um, most of the time, we only plan for them to be a few minutes. I think we've done a couple of those that have gone a little longer than expected. Uh, but uh, we'll have that one for you today, of course, as well as Tuesday. Uh, we'll be having our midweek uh, midweek prayer a midweek prayer meeting, and then also a Word Bible Institute class will be in the book of John for that. And a Thursday, we'll be having a temperance awakening, and then Friday, our weekend study, we'll begin looking at uh, Jehovah's Witnesses. Yeah, Jehovah's Witnesses. And then, of course, we'll be uh, preaching here uh, Sunday. And then next week, whenever we have the revival, we won't, uh, we won't be having any other uh, classes or like Word Bible Institute, a Temperance Awakening. We won't have our weekend study. But we're actually going to be praying every day, though, every single day, Monday to Friday there. Before we preach, we're going to be praying. Of course, praying, you know, accompanies revival. And as we always say with our prayer meeting, you know, that's no excuse not have private secret prayer. And that's actually the subject that we looked at last week in our midweek prayer meeting. You know, we should all be praying in private. But God, though, a couple of things, God does uh, honor, you know, people who, who pray in agreement, you know, and that's a great thing about technology. And also, so, you know, we hope this incites more people to prayer, you know, and revive. Because if you're going to pray, then, you know, you're going to have revival. If you want to have revival, you got to, you know, have prayer. Those are two things that go hand in hand. And so we'll be praying. We don't plan for those also to be very long. You know, we don't, you know, really plan to go more than, you know, necessarily 10 minutes. Uh, you know, with those 10 minutes or so, you know, with those prayer meetings, unless, you know, the Lord just, you know, moves on us and, you know, we're praying here an hour. If that's what God wants to do. But uh, but come on back, though. I'll be praying for the meeting. And uh, we certainly do look forward uh, to a next week's revival. Pray that God would make it easy on us. Uh, like, if you watch our videos of me preaching in, like, voice and sign language, I uh, oftentimes I don't do that as well as I'd like. I can be, you know, a little slow. But, uh, you know, that's what God wants us to do. And it's good practice, you know, for whenever we do start a church. You know, just like anything else, you know, when I started preaching, you know, just in English when I was 15, I wasn't you know, made a big mess much of the time, uh, but, you know, you continue at it, and you get better, just like preaching also in sign language. And so now we'll go to the 33rd Psalm, the 33rd Psalm here, and uh, we'll read the first four verses here to get us rolling. Of course, these will be the four verses that we look at today. They all constitute the first point. And it says, Rejoice in the Lord, O ye righteous, for praise is comely for the upright. Praise the Lord with heart, sing unto him with a psaltery and an instrument of ten strings. Sing unto him a new song, play skillfully with a loud noise. For the word of the Lord is right, and all his works are done in truth. And we'll go to the Lord in another word of prayer. Our Father, we sure do love you. We thank you for the innocence of sin. And thank you so much, Lord, for our salvation and for your word, Lord God, and the help that it gives us. And thank you so much, Lord, for, you know, like the Holy Spirit, for the word of God and for prayer. And how the Holy Spirit, you know, helps us, you know, in our lives, helps us in our home lives to be better. And we pray that we would do that, Lord. You know all the burdens on all the hearts, and we certainly pray, Lord, that you just touch them, and that you would just help them, Lord, in a mighty, mighty way. And may, Lord, you just have a preeminence, you know, to move on hearts and lives. And you know, uh, uh, you know the, the, you know the needs, you know, and what's uh, what's holding uh, people, what's holding people down, and all. And we certainly do just pray, Lord, that you'd help them, you know, with those things. Just encourage them, and just to help us all to be biblical, you know, and have the right character about things that we face and have the right faith and, you know, do things in a biblical, you know, in a biblical manner and just to make Christ be honored and glorified throughout all that we do here today, Lord God, for it's in that precious name of Jesus Christ we do pray. Just preach us, Lord, hide us behind the cross and help us. Amen and amen. And so now we begin the 33rd Psalm and, uh, and giving the title this, a Psalm of Rejoicing, a Psalm of Rejoicing. And uh, if you read other commentaries and, you know, other Bible study books or whatever about the 33rd Psalm, uh, most of them are going to have that title, a Psalm of Rejoicing, as, you know, that's just exactly what it is. And uh, this is what they call an orphan psalm. Uh, you know, there's not any author named. You know, there, there's no title either. You know, there's no, like, title in Hebrew and no author named. It is Davidic in nature, but uh, so, you know, maybe David, you know, could have possibly wrote this, but just didn't take the credit for it. Uh, but, uh, you know, we don't know anything about the background or anything of this psalm. But it is, though, a psalm, you know, of rejoicing. You know, rejoicing in God, you know, wants His people, uh, you know, to rejoice. You know, yes, we have those trials and we have those tribulations, but, you know, we are to be happy. Uh, you know, be happy in the Lord. 
Uh, like George Mueller used to often say, the first thing that God wants that God wants me to do is to get happy in my soul. And you know, and how do we get happy in our soul? You know, that's by praying, by spending time with God. Uh, you know, by by studying the Bible. You know, and I love. You know, I love all of that. It is you know, it is a great joy. Uh, you know, like prayer. Now, prayer, you know, is work. I think prayer, just my opinion, and most other people I've read after and heard agree with me, you know, I think prayer, you know, is really more work than anything, you know, really getting down to it, you know, spending extended time in prayer. Takes a lot of strength, you know, takes a lot of brain power. But prayer, though, is extremely, you know, enjoyable. Same with studying the Bible. You know, I don't at all. You know, lots of people, you know, like just, you know, people that really aren't spiritual find the Bible boring. But, you know, I love, you know, the Word of God. You know, I, that, that's, that's the two greatest thrills that I've ever had in my life. Uh, you know, like I said that, uh, I said that with this ministry, I believe it was not long ago. I believe that was when we were preaching in voice and sign language. You know, like I was in the Navy. You know, I've been to several other states. You know, I lived in Canada. You know, I've been to the states of, you know, uh, many, many, many states, you know, from Montana in the west, you know, all the way up to all the way up to Maine in the northeast, all the way down to Florida. But, you know, the Bible, you know, studying the Bible and prayer, you know, are the two most thrilling things that I have ever, ever endured, you know, in my life. Because it is just a great joy, man. And our first point here with all of these first uh, four verses will simply be this, the rejoicing of the righteous. The rejoicing of of the righteous. It says there, verse number one, rejoice in the Lord. And that's letter A simply, rejoice in the Lord. You know, that is, as we said, you know, that is biblical. I know like a lot of lost people and even carnal Christians, you know, that they can't really comprehend that. You know, what's, uh, you know, like what kind of, you know, joy or whatever, you know, can there be, you know, from, you know, from, you know, something as boring as the Bible and praying and, you know, having to live in a religion, you know, by rules and, you know, etc., etc. But Philippians 4, 4, though, tells us a very different story. It says rejoice in the Lord. Not only does it say rejoice in the Lord, but what does it say there? Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. You know, the Apostle Paul, you know, stresses that there. You know, we are to rejoice, you know, in the good Lord. You know, we are to be happy, you know, in God always. You know, there, there's no reason, uh, you know, to be down, you know, to be out, you know. But we are to rejoice, you know, even in difficult times, even in, even in hardships. You know, we are to rejoice knowing that God has a reason, uh, you know, for all things. And probably if more people would just be faithful and rejoice, uh, you know, through some early trials, you probably, truth be known, wouldn't have quite as many trials, you know, in the future. Uh, but, you know, that's the Lord's will that we rejoice. And we have a very similar verse over there in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse number 16. What does it say? Rejoice evermore. Rejoice evermore. And around this verse, really, uh, you know, the, the following verses here, you know, tell us a couple of things about rejoicing. So we are to rejoice evermore, and what else are we to do in our spiritual life? Pray without ceasing, like we just mentioned there. See, we are to pray without ceasing. We're to have a prayer life. You know, of all the things that the Apostle Paul could have told the church at Thessalonica after he told them to rejoice evermore, to always be rejoicing, it was to pray. Not just to pray, but to pray without ceasing. You know, that's having a prayer life, you know, like that verse there. You know, that's why we use that terminology, having a prayer life. Because, you know, as we always say here, you know, that's, first of all, that's something everybody can do. You know, they're like uh, people that have eye problems, you know, who can't read. You know, there's especially like a lot of older people, you know, they can't read very well. You know, some people, you know, can't read very well. Some people can't study very well. Like some people, you know, have health problems and they're bound to their house. You know, they can't get out of their house very much. You know, like we have people in nursing homes, you know, who can't, you know, who aren't as mobile. You know, they can't, you know, get out, even get out into their community. But everybody, though, can pray. Everybody can have a prayer ministry. And that's why everybody is commanded to pray, to have a prayer life. And if you want to rejoice in the Lord, you know, that that's going to include prayer. You know, I know it. I've walked down that road before. You know, you can't have real joy in the Lord if you don't have a prayer life. Then verse 18, in everything give thanks. See, in everything, see, even in our trials and hardships, like we mentioned. 
you know, knowing that God's using those things to try our faith, you know, just like whenever we also fall into temptation, uh, you know, temptation to, you know, watch something nasty or to do something that's wrong, you know, we are to give thanks for that. You know, even whenever somebody disrespects us, you know, we are to give thanks for that. For that's a trying, you know, of our character. You know, whenever somebody disrespects us, you know, are we going to keep Christian character? You know, are we going to, you know, be like Jesus, you know, was the people? I know that's easier said than done, but, you know, that really shows a spiritual person. You know, what did Jesus do? You know, whenever people were beating him, he said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. You know, he said, you know, like the Apostle Paul, I believe, also said, you know, what, you know, people do to me, may it, may it not be laid to their charge. You know, may the Lord save them and deliver them, you know, from their own doing. See, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. And then also quench not the Spirit. Because, see, you can't rejoice if you quench the Spirit of God. You know, certainly like we've said, in your personal life, you know, you can't, you can't, you know, watch filthy things on television, you know, listen to filthy music, or, or like we often say here, you know, not even give God any of your time. You know, even if things you're watching or whatever, you know, isn't nasty. If you spend all of your time just, you know, watching television sitcoms and television dramas, you know, that might not even be all that filthy, or, you know, and or, you know, spend all your time watching ball games or, you know, out on the lake fishing or, you know, in the fields hunting, and you never have a prayer life or a Bible study life, you know, you're not going to have the joy of the Lord. You know, you're only going to have the joy of the Lord whenever you give God a great multitude of your time. See, we can't quench the Spirit. See, that also goes for a church. You know, that also goes, you know, corporately. If you have a church, you know, that's praying, you know, praying a lot, you know, a prayer-filled church, you know, with pe people who are students of the Bible, you know, people who love the Word of God, you know, who love to hear preaching, you know, people who love, you know, holiness, you know, people who have very strong, you know, spiritual lives, you know, that's a church that's going to have a lot of joy in it. You know, that's a church that's going to have a lot of happiness in the Lord. But see, if you take a church that's the other way, that has very little prayer, you know, where people pray very little, where people have very little, you know, of a, you know, a very sparse spiritual life, you know, that's a church that's not going to have the joy of the Lord. You know, those are going to be churches that have problems. You know, because people there, you know, just don't know anything about prayer, don't know anything about studying the Bible. <clears throat> and see, that's real rejoicing, you know, in the Lord. See, and just continuing that thought, really going right along with it, going back to the 33rd Psalm, our first phrase there, Rejoice in the Lord, and who is that, O ye righteous? For praise is comely for the upright. Let her be here, be righteous and upright. And, you know, we're just kind of, you know, building on what we've already said. You know, if you're a person that's going to have the joy of the Lord, then you're going to have God's righteousness. You know, you're going to be a righteous person. You're going to be one that's upright. You know, you're a person, you know, that's going to be living a holy, you know, separated life. You know, that's why we have laws, you know, just laws, you know, in our society. Like, you know, kind of like with Christianity and all. And, you know, especially, you know, fundamentalist, you know, we being people of high standards, you know, and so forth, people might say, well, you know, like, where's the joy and all in that, you know, with all these standards and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Well, you know, we see that actually, you know, in our society in the United States of America. Now, I know we might have some laws, you know, that should not be enforced, and then we have, you know, some things that should be laws but are not. But, you know, that's just like society, you know, in our you know, in our communities, you know, we have, like I said, we have laws. Because, see, if you didn't have those laws, then, you know, your life would be watching, you know, it would be a mess. Like, what if it wasn't illegal, you know, to shoot somebody? What if it wasn't illegal, you know, to assault somebody? You know, then, you know, our life would be watched, you know, our life would be chaotic, you know, what if it wasn't wrong to steal? You know, then you'd have people, you know, coming out of Walmart, the malls, and Targets, and things all the time. You know, our life would be chaos. See, that's just like the Christian life. You know, God, you know, gave us, you know, a book, you know, of commandments and statutes to help us live holy and pure. So that we could have a joyous life. Well, see, that's, you know, like the Ten Commandments, you know, that's why they were given. You know, simply the Ten Commandments, you know, they were given you know, the people of Israel, so that they, you know, could live a better life. You know, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, 
you know, thou shalt not commit adultery. But see, like relationships, you know, between marriages, you know, would be awful. You, you know, would be horrible, you know, if you had, you know, spouses cheating on each other. You know, your marriage life, romance life would be, you know, quite drastic. <clears throat> But see, like in Genesis chapter 7 and, you know, verse number 1, you know, we see that very early in the Bible about Noah. It says, And the Lord said unto Noah, Come thou and all thy house unto the ark, for thee have I seen righteous before me in this generation. See, Moses, see, and his family were spared, you know, because they were righteous people. You know, they were people who were still able to enjoy, you know, the blessings of God. They were still able to, you know, rejoice in the Lord because they were righteous people. That wasn't so for everybody else. You know, everybody else at that time, unfortunately, you know, they were, you know, they were taken off, you know, of the earth. You know, they passed away in the flood. But see, once again, that's what being righteous will do for you. You know, that will preserve, you know, that will preserve you. So see, somebody that's unrighteous, you know, eventually they're going to die. You know, even a saved person, you know, a saved person, you know, who walks away from God, you know, you know, for so long, you know, they're going to just be living in misery. You know, eventually they are going to be cut off. Psalm 512, For thou, Lord, wilt bless the righteous with favor, wilt thou compass him as with a shield. See, more reasons why we can rejoice. First, you know, the Lord will bless the righteous. You know, the Lord will bless the righteous. Now, God, generally speaking, blesses everybody. Like, you could be viewing this video, and you could either be lost or, you know, out of God's will. Well, you know, who th first who gave you the energy to get up this morning? You know, that was God. You know, who provides you with food? You know, that's God. Who's given you shelter? That's God. You know, who's given you children if you have them? That's just by the grace of God that you're a father or a mother or a grandmother or a grandfather. This verse, though, of course, is talking about, you know, special blessings that only righteous people get. You know, this is talking about our prayers, you know, like being heard. Let's see, the Bible says a lot about that. We might even have some Bible verses here in a little bit, you know, that talk particularly about that. But the Lord, you know, He does, though. He has special blessings, you know, for the righteous, you know, people who are, you know, praying for Him. That's what Jesus said. You know, in John 15, you know, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Because righteous people are praying, you know, the right prayers. You know, they're, they're asking God for power upon their lives. You know, I, I'm a person that has needs. I'm praying for something. I've been praying for something now for a while, but I make supplication about it all the time. You know, I'm always praying for this. You know, when I go over my prayer journal, you know, when my family, you know, prays, you know, together, you know, over our prayer list, you know, the things, you know, that you see behind me. You know, I'm always asking, you know, for that, making supplication. But I want those things, though, for the glory of God, you know, for the ministry. And those are blessings, you know, that only the righteous have. Like, like I know, especially you see that in this day and time. You know, like on social media, you know, like you see a person, you know, in one post, you know, they're, they're asking God, you know, they're, they're asking people to pray for them, you know, please pray for, you know, please pray for, uh, you know, me and my family, you know, we have whatever need, etc., etc. Then a post later, you know, they're cussing or, you know, they're using profanity or talking about watching some filthy movie, you, you know, just, you know, with sin in their life. See, God, you know, unfortunately, God doesn't hear their prayers. God don't hear the prayers of a sinner. God doesn't hear the prayers of somebody, you know, with unrighteousness. You know, in their life, somebody with iniquity, you know, in their heart, you know, God doesn't hear the prayers of somebody that is not faithful. You know, God doesn't hear the prayers, you know, of a lost person or a Christian, you know, that isn't in his will. But he does, though the righteous, you know, those are special blessings, you know, that righteous people, truly righteous people get. See, and what else there? You know, God's going to bless the righteous with favor. Wilt thou compass him as with a shield? See, that's our protection. See, there's protection, you know, for people that live. You know, for the Lord. You know, God does. You know, he makes special, you know, provision. You know, he makes special provision for them. Yes, you know, we have people like Job, you know, and even like, like Job who went through so much. And then like the Apostle Paul, you know, just like, you know, the Apostle Paul, you know, who also, you know, went through... <clears throat> you know, went through a lot in the ministry, but God always, though, gave them that which they need. 
you know, and their, their trials, you know, proved their faith, you know, the hardships that they had. You know, and God, though, you know, like I said, you know, he always delivered them in his time, you know, and in his way. In Psalm 19, 9, the fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. See, what do we have, you know, as a righteous people? We're clean. See, nobody likes something dirty. You know, like even a homeless person, you know, if they have the choice, you know, they're going to eat clean food over dirty food. You know, they'd rather be clean, you know, than be unclean. You know, that they've given the opportunity, they'd rather go take a shower and put on fresh clothes and all, you know, rather than, you know, wearing the same clothes for a month and being filthy and nasty. But see, those who fear the Lord, you know, they're clean. Because the fear of the Lord is clean. See, and what else? You know, enduring forever, you know, just like we said. You know, real people of faith, you know, they endure forever. See, and the judgments of the Lord, you know, they're true and they're righteous. See, we have the truth. See, what this world has, you know, is a lie. You know, it's deception. You know, it isn't real. But what God has is real and true. Now we go to the 34th Psalm. And verse number 15, another, uh, you know, for me to what we've been saying here. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are open unto their cry. You know, just like we've already said there. You know, the Lord is watching out for righteous people. You know, his ears are open to their prayers. Because as we said, somebody that's unrighteous, you know, somebody that's lost, or somebody that's not in God's will, you know, they don't have that promise. God doesn't hear their prayers. Psalm 35, 27. Let them shout for joy and be glad that favor my righteous cause. See, God's righteous cause. See, people can be happy, you know, who are doing the Lord's work, who are for His cause. You know, there's great joy, you know, in that. You know, that's a joy that can't be described. You know, my family, me and my wife, you know, we're certainly, you know, evidence of that. <laughs> You know, why, you know, would a boy from South Carolina and a girl from Alabama, you know, want to go up north, you know, when most people do the direct opposite, you know, most people, you know, they move, you know, up north, you know, they move, or, you know, at least the, most of them, you know, when they retire, they go to the south. But see, me and my wife are overjoyed, you know, to go to the north, because that's the will of God for us, you know, to do the Lord's work. You know, yea, let them say continually, let the Lord be magnified, which hath pleasure, in the prosperity of his servant. Because see God, see there, which hath pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. See God, you know, wants to, you know, God wants to bless us. God wants us to be happy. And we can have that, you know, if we are faithful to the Lord. Psalm chapter 37, and a verse number, verse number 16. A little that a righteous man hath is better than the riches of many wicked. Well, see, a righteous person is right with God. See, a wicked person is not, no matter how much riches they have. You know, they don't know what real joy and real happiness is. But a person that walks with God does. Psalm 55, 22. Cast thy burden upon the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. See, like us righteous people, you know, we're to give God all our burdens. You know, that's also in the New Testament. You know, cast all your care upon him, for he careth for you. See, that's that's another privilege, you know, of righteous people, people in God's will. You know, we can cast our burdens on the Lord, you know, and he will sustain us. You know, he'll give us all that which we need, you know, in, in his time, you know, in the Lord's time. You know, he'll give us that which we need. He'll never suffer the righteous to be moved, you know. He'll never suffer the righteous to fall, you know, or to perish. Now we go to the uh, Psalm 58.10, the last verse that we have here with this subpoint. The righteous shall rejoice when he seeth the vengeance. He shall wash his feet in the blood of the wicked. Go see now, vengeance doesn't belong to us. It doesn't belong to people. It belongs to God. But there comes a time, though, you know, when that does happen. You know, there comes a time when God, you know, removes. You know, when God, you know, removes, you know, people who were in opposition to his people. You know, whenever he takes hindrances out of the way, you know, because there are people that are just hindrances. You know, they sow discord. You know, they tell lies. You know, they just cause problems, you know, in a church. You know, and just hinder the people of God. You know, there comes a time, you know, when God removes those people. <clears throat> 
and we can, you know, us as God's people, you know, we can have peace. That God will do that, you know, in His time. You know, He will. And now we go back here to verse number 2 of Psalm 33. It says, Praise the Lord with heart, sing unto Him with a psaltery and an instrument of ten strings. See a letter, a letter C here. We can praise the Lord with song. You know, we are to praise the Lord, you know, in song and be happy. You know, that's why we sing hymns, because we're happy in the Lord. Then our verse number three, sing unto him a new song. Sing unto him a new song, play skillfully with a loud noise. Letter D here, we are to have a new song. See, the song that we have isn't the song of the world. It's not the song that, that we had before, but it's a new one. You know, it is a new song because we have a new life. You know, we have a new desire. See, everybody at one time was lost. You know, when I was lost, I didn't like reading the Bible or praying. That was all boring to me. I didn't like going to church. Didn't like it really one bit. You know, soon as, you know, when I was lost, soon as preaching, you know, started. You know, I couldn't, you know, I couldn't wait till it was over, you know, especially on Sunday mornings. You know, I could get home and watch the football games and watch the NASCAR race. But when I got saved, I got a new desire. You know, I had a new desire put in me. See, in a Psalm 40, verse 3, And he hath put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Many shall see it, and fear, and shall trust in the Lord. Of course, this kind of, uh, this, uh, kind of expression here, verse, is uh, throughout the Psalms in a few places. Also in Psalm 96, verse 1, Oh, sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord all the earth. Psalm 98, 1. Oh, sing unto the Lord a new song, for he hath done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm hath gotten him the victory. See, the Lord's done marvelous things. He saved our soul and already brought us this far. You know, he has a holy arm and he's given us the victory. In Psalm 144. In verse number 9, I will sing a new song unto thee, O God, upon a psaltery and an instrument of ten strings, while I sing praises unto thee. See, we have a new song. Psalm 149, 1. Praise ye the Lord, sing unto the Lord a new song, and his praise in the congregation of the saints. And now finishing up here, now going back to the 33rd Psalm, Verse 4, For the word of the Lord is right, and all his works are done in truth. So last year, letter E, the word of God is right and truth. See, that goes along with it there. See, that certainly is, you know, a part of our joy. Because, see, we're right. If you're in the word of God, you're right. You can't go wrong with the word of God. See, that's why the world is wrong, because they don't have the word of God. But, see, everything about God is right and truth. Second Samuel twenty two thirty one, and I've used this verse at least one time before. So I know this was actually my personal, you know, Bible memory verse. Uh, you know, some time ago. That's been a good while ago. That might have been about a year or so ago now. It says, "As for God, His way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler to all them that trust in Him." See, He is a buckler. You know, that means like safety. You know, once again, like we've already gone over that. See, the Lord, you know, will always keep those people safe who trust in Him. You know, even through trials and tribulation during hard times. And see, as for God, His way is perfect. See, like we often, you know, say here. See, if you've got the Word of God and you're going in God's direction, going down the path that God has for you, you know, that, that is perfect. You know, that means there's no flaws. You know, that there, there's no flaws in a life, you know, when somebody's living for God. You know, whenever they've got the Word of God, they're living according to God's Word. You know, they're living a life of prayer, a life of righteousness. You know, that way is perfect. That's, you know, partly why it is so joyous. 
You know, because nobody, you know, can go wrong according to the Word of God. You know, if you are wrong, that's because you don't have the Bible. Matthew 4.4 4. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. You'll see, we don't live simply by, you know, physical food. You know, what says God's people, you know, we are sustained, you know, we have joy because we have the Word of God. And as we said, you know, that is a necessity if you want a successful Christian life. If you want to be happy in God, then you must have His Word. Luke chapter 11, verses 27 and 28. And it came to pass, as he spake these things, a certain woman of the company lifted up her voice and said unto him, Blessed is the womb that bare thee, and the paps which thou hast sucked. So this is somebody right here that wants to do what? They want to praise Mary, you know, just like the Roman Catholic Church does. But what did Jesus say, though? But he said, Yea, rather, blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. See, people who keep the word of God, you know, they're the people that are going to be blessed, not even people that honor Mary. You know, not even people that worship you know, that worship Mary, even though she was a godly, virtuous woman. You know, she wasn't worthy of worship. See, like of all the things Jesus said in response to that, he said, hear the word of God and keep it, because, you know, it's wrong to worship anybody but God. And what we have is God's word. You know, and we are to dwell on it, and we are to keep it. You know, and that will, you know, that will give you joy, you know, that's unspeakable. You know, that'll give you a joy and a peace, you know, that cannot, you know, that nobody, you know, can describe. You know, a real, you know, a real, you know, a real, real joy there, amen. So thank you so much there for being with us, and uh, certainly good stuff there from the Word of God. And keep praying for us, as we said right after this, uh, going to be uh, going to be doing a teaching about rising early and seeking the Lord. Of course, we're going to be having our prayer meeting uh, later on this week, or probably be Tuesday, at least by Wednesday, at least by Thursday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, though we try to, uh, probably though, I'm sure this week going to be uploading that on Tuesday. Of course, then uh, over with the Word Bible Institute and Temperance Awakening, be having that later this week as well. And then our weekend study, you know, we'll be doing that Friday or Saturday. And then preaching, of course, in voice and sign language. But I actually forgot to mention that. But, you know, we do that every every week. You know, that's usually uploaded on a Saturday, a Friday, or a Saturday, you know, whenever we get the opportunity. So a lot going on here with our ministry, and uh, we love it. You know, appreciate it. You know, just what I was thinking there about joy in the Lord. Uh, you know, like I told my wife not long ago, you know, I wouldn't trade, you know, one chapter of the Bible that I've read, uh, you know, one article that I've written, you know, one book, you know, that I've read, one book that I've written, you know, one sermon, one, you know, one teaching, whatever. You know, wouldn't trade anything for anything that the world has. Thank for what God's called me to do. It is a real joy. Amen. It is a real joy. I'm certainly living proof of that. So thank you so much, though, for our prayers for us. Pray that we'd remain faithful. Amen. And uh, for now, with our Sunday sermon, we'll close in prayer. Our Father, we sure do love you, and we thank you for the goodness of sin. Thank you for all that you've done, all the blessings that you've bestowed upon our hearts and lives, Lord God. And we are so thankful, Lord God, for your grace and mercy and what you've called us to do and what you allow us to do to build your kingdom. I'll be with all those that we've mentioned in prayer, for my wife's special needs, for my uh, mother-in-law and uh, Tim Jackson and Deb Lamantia and Brother Larry. Pray that you touch those people and help them in a mighty way uh, with what they stand in need of, as well as all our listeners. Lord, in their needs, you know, those that are carrying burdens, you know, those that are discouraged, you know, and those also, you know, with physical needs, you know, that, uh, that that stand in need with help in physical aspects, with spiritual needs, financial needs, emotional needs, whatever it might be, Lord, certainly pray that you touch them and help them, and give us all that which we need, Lord God, to build your kingdom, you know, give us that, uh, you know, give us that which is su sufficient, you know, and please sustain us, I know, Lord, we all have needs, and like, we don't always get things, you know, exactly when we think we need them, you know, sometimes we have to wait wait, but your timing, Lord, is always perfect, and I pray that we would rely on that, and just keep us and use us for your honor and glory, and bring us back here at the next point in time with the word awakening, and for it's in that blessed name of Jesus Christ, we pray all these things, amen, and amen. Thank you so much for being with us, and we'll see you next time, so that it breaks and the shadows flee away. I am Brother Cooper, and I love you, and I appreciate you.